How's it going everyone? It's Javi from Weather SpongeBob. That was today is January 10th, 2022, and today we're gonna forecast the type of weather conditions you should experience this coming spring. Will you experience a warmer than average spring? Will you experience a, or will you experience a colder or a drier than average spring? I'll answer those questions in this video for each specific region in the United States. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather lay called make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather lay content so let's begin by taking a look at the enzo outlook over the next several months and as you can see if we were to take a look at the forecast over the next few months including the spring months you see that we're expected to enter a neutral phase when it comes to the enzo pattern and this and taking a look at the enzo outlook could make a huge difference in terms of the type of weather conditions you experience within a given time period within the year so seeing an enzo pattern really gives us a good idea of what to expect for this coming spring in each region of the united states so we've been in a la nina for the past several months of course throughout this winter we've been in a la nina and that's expected to continue until up until march where we have an even chance of around a neutral phase or la nina phase occurring right around march but you see that entering the months of april may and even june the most likely scenario is that we will be in a neutral phase with a la nina phase and el nino phase being very unlikely during those months so we should expect enzo i mean neutral type conditions when it comes to this spring spring of 2022 so to really show you guys what typically happens during a neutral pattern during the spring months so let's first take a look at a la nina and el nino so during a la nina we see a very pronounced jet stream dip that brings a lot of cold, cooler air further southward which means that typically the northern united states experiences a colder than average winter but not only that a lot of the northern united states also experience a snow experiences a snowier than average average winter throughout the um, northern united states and but when it comes to spring we typically see colder than average conditions throughout the northern united states especially with this pacific jet stream moving through but it's typically drier than average during a la nina Compared to in El Nino, where we see the polar jet stream well up into Canada, and it's typically a lot more moist than average further southward, right around the southeast. But if we take a look at a neutral pattern, I'd say a neutral pattern is fairly similar to, let's say, a La Nina pattern, because we still do see a very pronounced jet stream dip. We see that colder air further northward that's bringing colder air closer to the northeast as well as the uh, northern midwest and we still see that pacific jet moving through and we see but what's different about a neutral phase um um from a la nina is the subtropical jet that moves through the southeast where we do see more moist and average conditions in the southeast compared to a la nina which just sees drier than average where the southeast just experiences drier than average conditions compared to the neutral phase so i'd say that's really the only notable difference that we do see more moist than average conditions throughout the southeast so this is definitely something we need to go by when forecasting what type of winter you should ex i mean what type of spring you should expect for the united states as typically we will we see colder than average conditions throughout a lot of the northern united states more moist than average in the southeast but particularly warmer than average along the southern portion of the united states so this is definitely something we need to go by when forecasting this spring um, how the weather conditions this spring will look like but there are other also other factors we need to take a look at so let's also take a look at the probability of a high or a higher the probability of a higher risk of a severe weather threat throughout the united states based on the enzo outlook for this spring so if we were to take a look at the differences when it comes to severe weather when it comes to either an el nino or la nina you see there it's pretty dramatic because during an el nino we typically see less tornadoes than average especially right around the tornado valley right around the midwest where tornadoes are less frequent however during a la nina phase we typically see more tornadoes than average and it also goes same way when it comes to hailstorms where hailstorms are typically a lot more frequent during a la nina phase than an el nino phase so since we're not going to be in either one of these um patterns coming into this spring 
I'd say it's it'll still be better to lean more towards the La Nina pattern when it comes to severe weather, which would mean more tornadoes and hailstorms be more frequent. As a result of just um, the United States experiencing a La Nina phase right now during the winter months. And if we were to read this small excerpt right here, it states that typically we can base what an Enzo pattern will look like when um, when we take a look at the months of December, January, and February. And of course, we're still in the month of January and we're still in a La Nina. While the forecast does expect us to return back to a neutral phase, for one thing, a neutral phase is very similar to a La Nina phase. And another thing too is that it often takes a bit of time for the atmosphere to adapt to the changes in the sea surface temperatures right around the equatorial Pacific. So that will definitely lean more towards the La Nina pattern in this case where tornadoes and hailstorms are a bit more frequent right around the Midwest. So while I wouldn't say it's going to be so much more frequent tornadoes and hailstorms for this spring, it will definitely be a fact. I think it, we will see maybe slightly more tornadoes and hailstorms for this spring in the Midwest as a result of the reasons I just stated. So I'd say prepare for potentially a more active tornado and hailstorm threat than you typically see in the United States, um, in the Midwest especially, because we're more likely to see that for this spring. But taking a look at other factors, so let's take a look at the pretty much the sea temperature temperatures in the Nino 3.4 region of the equatorial Pacific pretty much over the past 70 years. So I took a look at this chart and pretty much I listed down all the years which had a neutral phase during or majority of the months during spring were in the neutral phase and i pretty much took them in a list and i pretty much put them in a climate data plot that really shows the temperature or precipitation anomalies of neutral enzo patterns in the united states so i included years such as 1951 and 1952 where pretty much all the years were in a neutral where pretty much all the months I meant to say were in a neutral phase and pretty much all the years that were neutral I pretty much list them down and put them in a data plot and compared it and compared the temperature anomalies of those years the temperatures of those years to the long-term average between 1991 and 2020 and if we were to take a look at the averages or the results that come out of this data plot you see that the temperature anomalies throughout the entire eastern half and even the southern united states bring temperatures well below average and it's especially evident right around the great lakes region and the northeast where we typically see temperatures well below average for the winter time i mean for the spring um right around the right around the northeast so um compare so this is all the neutral years we compared it to the long-term average and we pretty much got these results. So it's safe to say that based on this, we could assume that most of the United States for this spring will be under below average conditions because there seems to be very strong evidence, evidence that a neutral phase in the United States typically equates to a cooler than average winter, I mean spring for most of the United States. And the only areas where you're experiencing maybe around average temperatures or slightly above average is right around the Pacific Northwest. But outside of that, it's cooler than average for most of the United States. So I'd say this is the biggest, um, this is probably the best forecast method when forecasting the spring 2020, when forecasting the weather conditions you should experience for spring 2022 because we're pretty much comparing his, um, the neutral pattern to tip, typical historical averages. And it gives us very strong evidence that it's typically a lot cooler in the United States during a neutral phase. So I think we should expect a cooler and average winter for most, I mean, spring for most of the United States. I need to stop saying winter. I'm just so used to saying it because of my winter forecast. But um, spring is what I'm talking about. Now let's take a look at the precipitation um, anomalies for neutral phases compared to the long-term average between 
1991 and 2020 and you see that it's a bit more scattered but we do see a trend where it's simply drier than average throughout texas oklahoma and extending right around the Ohio Valley, it's simply drier than average, while the southeast, like we typically should see, is more moist than average, which includes states like Alabama, Georgia, even portions of South Carolina and North Carolina are involved, Mississippi and Louisiana and the Panhandle of Florida. This is where it's simply more moist than average, and outside of it, outside of that, it's pretty much average when it comes to precipitation with some scattered areas maybe experiencing slightly more precipitation than average but it won't be i'd say a big enough of an effect to where you'll actually notice it and this could be and this could easily be one of those years where maybe the neutral year does not really correlate to what this map says especially in the lighter shaded regions where it seems like more, more moist than average or more more drier than average um, spring is less evident based on the historical data. So, I'd, but based on this, I'd still say that it'll typically be drier than average throughout the Ohio River Valley and like same through Texas, Oklahoma, but and more moist than average throughout the southeast. So, there is a type of conditions we should expect this spring for the United States. Um, now let's take a look at what the computer models are saying or the climatology models because they also have a say in what to expect for this spring. So if we were to take a look at the precipitation anomalies, um, um, you see that between the months of March, April, and May, the climatology models forecast a more moist than average Pacific Northwest and more moist than average throughout the Ohio River Valley as well. And for the southern United States, we typically see drier than average conditions. So for, uh, for a good portion of the United States, this completely contradicts what historical, historical data states. And based on, and to be honest, I'd rather lean more towards what historical data is saying of what typically happens during a neutral phase and what this computer model is typically saying. So I take this computer model with a grain of salt, but you could easily we can't easily disregard it either as it does still expect it's still somewhat reliable and it still does expect uh more uh, moist and average conditions throughout the pacific northwest um and i guess it's assuming that we're gonna still experience la nina conditions so that might be why um because we still do see more moist and average conditions throughout the harvard valley but um yeah you could um i'd say take it with a grain of salt i'd still lean more towards what um comparing the neutral years to a long-term average when it comes to precipitation and temperature anomalies but you can't disregard this completely either if we were to take a look at the temperature anomalies it pretty much contradicts a lot of what historical data states as well where it does bring coordinate average conditions throughout the pacific northwest while most of the United States is warmer than average. And in fact, it's pretty much completely, they're completely opposites both of the climate um, plot of what the climate plot is saying because the climate plot is pretty much being cooler than average conditions in the exact areas where this climatology model is bringing um, warmer than average conditions. So it's, so yeah, it's definitely gonna be difficult to forecast and see which one's correct, but I lean more towards a climate plot because it's based on years of historical data and um and while this computer model might have some truth to it and um, we still i'd say need to take it with a grain of salt overall so make sure to keep that in mind when forecasting this spring for your specific location now let me actually go into what to actually um what you should expect for this spring so for the Northeast, I'm expecting it to be colder and drier than what you typically see. Um, this is based on the fact that during a neutral year, we typically see colder and drier than average conditions. So I'm basing it off of that fact. And I'd say it's gonna be cool and dry for the Midwest, a lot of the Southwest, where we typically see cooler, cooler and drier than average conditions for a neutral during a neutral year i expect it to be a little bit cool more cool and moist and i think um overall for the united states you should expect more severe weather because we're still gonna feel the the small effects of a la nina winter we're experiencing right now and a neutral phase is not that much different than what 
a La Nina typically brings for the most part. Um, it's a little different when it comes to spring because, of course, um, during spring we don't see, um, because during the winter we don't see a, a cooler and dryer than average year for when it comes to a La Nina, but it's but in terms of the position of the jet stream it's still very similar and um if we were to take a look at the pacific northwest i'm expecting a warmer than average winter with average precipitation as um again that's what a neutral phase typically brings to united states but again take this forecast with a grain of salt um there's still a lot that could change um we might still be in a la nina by the time spring comes around so make sure to take it with a grain of salt um, but I'd say based on what historical data is stating, um, I'd say to lean more towards this forecast than not, but still it, this could be easily wrong. And I want to just put that out there when making this forecast, but yeah, guys, I guess that's it for this video. I uh, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. If you want to see more weather lay content, make sure to like, if you like this video and make, and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather lay content. And I hope you guys have a good day.